Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's a dreary day. A little bit of rain coming in and out. Figured I'd finally show you guys inside our barn. You are now watching Farming with Duffy Ag. So, today's Saturday. It's been raining on and off. Some places got snow. I'm glad we didn't get snow. I guess somebody got 12 inches today, but curtains are down. It's rather warm out still. Tractors are still parked up. But we'll take a step inside the barn and we'll explain what goes on really here. Um, so, we've been milking with one robot for 10 years now. Um, the barn was built, started construction almost 12 years ago. I think it uh, showed up in my memories that we started the manure pit 12 years ago, which you guys have seen a lot of that. Um, but it was built with the idea of milking with two robots. Um, we went in, we were milking 60 to 70 cows with one robot. And finally made the move, um, it would be three years ago in April I think the second robot so that is the history of that so it's a Lester building um, how it works and a lot of people have seen it we farm in a state park we milk cows in the tie stall three times a day um, I should remember 87 87 my family moved down here my mom my dad and my sister um, and our plan was, after 20 years of being in there, we needed to go to parlor, help, liability on the tour side of it, and just cow comfort. Uh, that was updated as far as we really could go. New stalls, uh, milking equipment, cow comfort, everything we could do, we were there. Um, so, and then this became an idea, um, and robots became an idea, I wasn't really sure. Sat around for a while, and then, finally it all happened so that's how it works with the state they own the property they own the buildings um we own the second robot uh the manure pit all the tractors the cows we farm it like we own this place um it's unique very very unique it's got its pros and cons everybody says oh you get this for free we farm in an area where we spend a boatload of money on stuff that farmers other farmers want to really spend it on so liability for people suing us is through the roof. Um, we have been sued because somebody ran into an electric fence before. Um, stuff like that around us is way different. So it's not like we got a free barn and we're just cashing money in. We pay for the maintenance. We pay for any breakdowns. We pay for anything on the buildings pretty much. That's how it works. Like I said, we redid everything in that barn. That was all us. Um, basically, they give you a skeleton and we work with it. So, and we farm in a unique area. We run 15 miles um, for ground. Uh, it's not like right out our front doors. We have other farms and everything else like that. So it is drastically different. But like I said, we own the equipment. We own the bunker silos. Um, yeah, if there's any questions on that, let me know. I know some people are going to say, oh, this, that. Drop a comment. Let me know how you feel about it. So this is the facility. We've got that room. Got a bathroom, goes into the robots, utility room, compressors were put up there, bad idea, don't put them inside up there where they're bad to work on. So one compressor runs the top plates, we don't really use the top plates ever. Um, we updated and put a compressor out the back side of the tank, you guys have seen in here before. So, milk room, the bulk tank's big, it's built in the idea that we could go to milk and four robots. I don't ever see that happening because of the land base. So, like I said, we'll take a step back outside. So it's bulkheaded purely because building costs, having it outside is great. So we put the second compressor in, um, which does the bottom plates. We put that in this summer, something like that. So yeah, you got double doors to get into the utility room. Robot room. 
So we have this extra space here, which does have some clutter in it. Um, all those barrels need to get moved around. But basically here is for tours. So people come into here um, and we can give them a, the state gives tours. We do give tours depending on people. Currently with COVID, nothing. So it has a little bit of history of the farm. The Thai saw we used to milk in. Movie showing some of the farm. There's some great videos on YouTube as far as history, uh, what goes on here. So two robots. First one was put in, um, like I said, 10 years ago. It actually was installed two weeks ago, 10 years ago. Um, second one will be three years. Initially it was here, that ball was just blocked off and we tore it down and put the second one in. So a left and a right in the same group um, due to space, how we set up the holding area. Um, I'd like them all to be the same hand because of how cows stand in it, but it works really slick. And I'll show you when we go out in the holding area, um, what goes on, but everything's in a pit. Uh, the new style of De La Valve robots, they say the pit's not as deep. Being able to work with a cow and manually attach and hook up and do all that, and you're at that level makes it so nice. So I do see some robots with no pit. It's a cost. It's well worth it in my eyes. Um, but that's just how managing stuff. So things are cranking along on the robot side of it. Um, so the public, when the state is giving tours, they come in here, they will watch the robots run. They'll sneak into here. Usually all the doors are shut. Oops, wrong switch. But yeah, keep out safety zone. So we got the office. So you can see one robot. Windows in a dairy barn get absolutely filthy. So cow manure just makes it crazy. But there's when the slurry store was new. So installed in June of 2010. Um, and I don't think we were using it when that picture was taken, but yeah, basically an office, a lot of clutter going on in it right now. Then we'll step in here. So tours right now, we don't keep up on, there's a pile of sawdust because when we come through with the bedding spreader, it does kick it over. Um, but tours will go down. So there's a mat actually right here that shows the Krayberg mats that we have in like 75% of the barn. So it's like a comfy bed. Oops, sorry girl. And if you haven't watched some of the alley scraper videos, go back, you can watch the rail. So how this barn is set up, it's a four row barn. Um, so the barn's actually shorter than what we would usually have as um, like a three row pen. So your feed bunk alley is shorter. But with that being said, we're not as concerned because not all your cows are eating at the same time in a robotic facility. And we have the feed pusher, but head to head, row stalls on the outside, row stalls on the other side, which means because we're a guided flow barn, and I'll explain that in a second, cows cannot get up and eat and lay right back down so that does that so what's going on is this cow just went through the smart gate and the smart gate builds a uh has a list of criteria based on how you set it up cow goes through to go eat it says does she need to be milked how many cows are in the area um when she was last milked how much expected yield do you have her as a sort cow um and there's a few other decisions. You can build it based on anything. So it goes off milk and permission. How many cows are in it? So she had milk and permission. She went in. They're going to go get milked. When they leave, there's a second smart gate right there. That smart gate goes three different ways. It says, okay, you've been milked. There's nothing else that we want to do with you. You can send over and goes to feed. Or it says you haven't been milked, put you back in. Then the middle direction actually puts you in this sort group. So usually we run the sort group as pre-fresh or uh, fresh cows uh, that we milk all at the same time, or somebody who kicks, dances, has has a bad leg that we want to put in, make sure she doesn't stand around in there. So that will kick them into there. If we got a sorted cow to breed, we can put that where it puts her in, and then she can go right to that pen. So that's what's going on with them. 
Um, and everybody gets freaked out. Our competition, being Laylee, they say, oh, it's force flaw. No, cows go through the gate and go over to eat. When a barn is running and everything's on point, you're looking at 10 to, 10 to 12 gate passages through that entrance gate going to eat. We want to pick up the select cows and milk them in that time. With a guided flow barn, it's basically a guy standing there saying, hey, we want to milk you or we don't. At the same rate, you're utilizing the robots much better, well, in a better scenario than in a free flow barn because you don't have cows walking back into the robot saying, hey, I want to get milked again and saying, hey, I don't have permission. So you don't get those rejections. You start adding that up. It's time in the day. Um, but it's all how you want to manage it. Like I said in the previous video, we have two barns that are guided. We'll have a third that's a guided barn. Um, D Valve as a company was like 60% free flow barns. Retrofits usually work best in a free flow, but it's all expectation and how you're gonna manage it. So, like I said, a majority of the barn is Krayberg mats. They're absolutely awesome. They're top dollar though. So that gets a little scary on that, but they're absolutely awesome for cow comfort. We got some water beds. Um, they're dual chamber, individual beds with some padding underneath. I'm not such a big fan of them. So we did end up buying more Krabergs. Cows are relaxed in a robot barn, but that is the biggest thing. As I'm talking, they might get up. The whole point is to sneak through here quietly and not get them all up. So she just ate, she's hanging out. She'll push through these saloon gates. We use a lot of finger gates too. And she'll lay down. When she's hungry again, or when she wants to get milked, she hits that smart gate over there, either gets put in to get milk, or goes back to the feed bunk. And as you might have saw, we do have a new cow brush kicking around, so that cow brush is probably gonna get taken out, or the bristles, and we'll replace them. Like I said previously, that is one of the best things d Valve has ever sold. The manure drops, there's the video of what goes on with the manure system. I'll probably briefly go over, but go back, watch the alley scraper video. Um, so three alleyways. Yeah, alley scrapers are working good. So these stalls got added on. Previously when we were milking with one robot, we had our dry cows down in this end. So that is why there's alley, there's, there's mattresses here, and they had some of the feed bunk. We ended up putting in that one-way gate so that they, when they came from the feed bunk into here, they couldn't go right back to the feed bunk. Works good. Um, like I said, our mindset with you don't need the full feed bunk. Yeah. It works. I think we would have benefited some more by having all of it. Um, but the big thing is the feed pusher keeping feed in front of the cows so this is what your barn is supposed to look like when things are things are clicking if all your cows get up when you come in to feed then something is not right um, which then causes a traffic jam at the robots or backs everything up or you don't have enough he uh, headlock space so every cow in here or every feed stall in here has a feed loop and a headlock associated with it we did actually expand these out so there's a bigger gap in between them for some of our bigger cows. But what goes on here is the feed loops here keep cows from going sideways. They also step up out of the alleyway. Um, so when the scraper goes by and if you have your headlocks locked up, um, it doesn't bother the cows. So why do we use headlocks? Simply management. Keeping the cows calm in the same spot instead of chasing them around or trying to breed them um, in a corner with a halter. The biggest thing is preg checks. Uh, we can lock them all, go down, preg check them, unlock them. Everything is good. Um, so it's a management tool. I, I love them. I've had a lot of people say, oh, they make noise, this and that. You get used to that. The cows get used to it. And as you see, they're all very, very content with them. They're used to working with the headlocks. We got headlocks over in our heifers um, and headlocks here. Yeah, that's part of it, so. 
So the roof of the barn has some insulation. The sides are actually all air curtains and they're staggered. Um, there's three different levels on that. Um, and then there's one up in the top. The top very rarely gets used. So the idea is the barn stays about 35, 36 degrees, um, even in the coldest times. And it does very, very good there. So this is our sort group, as I was saying, and you can see the one-way gates coming, the saloon gates coming from when they milk, that's their return. So there's six stalls here. Currently there's five animals in it. And then they have their headlocks here. They can go eat, drink, lay down, relax. So like I said, if we got a cow that has a bum leg, we put her in there till she gets better. Um, you'll see there's a pipeline right here. We used, or a vacuum line, we used to bucket milk cows when we were growing from one robot to a second one. Because it is very hard to justify saying, hey, I'm milking 65 cows. Um, I'm gonna milk 75 cows and add a second robot. And we have a closed herd, have done, have had a closed herd since my lifetime. Um, so we don't have any diseases. Our immune system probably to our cows, if we brought something in would be drastic. Um, but we have no hoof rot, uh, nothing like that, nothing. Um, so that's a big concern if we were ever gonna say, hey, let's buy some cows. We're at the point where we have plenty of animals, plenty of replacements. Um, but growing into that was part of our thing for the second robot um, and to really maximize our investment in the time in the barn. Going from one robot to the second robot really didn't change how uh, we managed our time like that. So the efficiency of having two robots milking 120 or having one robot and milking 65, much more efficient with the second robot. But yeah, we do have birds in the barn no pigeons thank god um and the birds really aren't that bad they put bird netting on places but the second you open the doors they're in the fans like them tough on the sawdust the waterbed struggle comes right off what are you doing so yeah the mixer wagon's pulled in like this because it was raining so hard and it's got a load of feet on it so it doesn't sit outside that's why it's backwards but Feed pusher's been good. We added that when we added the second robot. Um, yeah, no really complaints. We didn't have enough space. We don't have enough space. Could use more calving pens. Could always use more space, but. That's the barn, which, yeah, it's awesome. It kind of runs itself. You gotta, any robot barn you get into it and it takes a while to really get it figured out. But once you're there, good good feed, good management on cows, and you'll things click along. So I'll give a brief of the manure. So there's a three foot pipe that comes out. There's actually right here an opening where you could get into it if you need to. Manure gases are deadly, so we try not to do that. And then it comes across. There's a catch basin right underneath me um, that will hold about three days worth of manure. It keeps going across. There is a seven or an eight foot, I never remember, catch basin here that goes all the way down below that manure pit with a 24 or 36 inch pipe. Um, I think it's a 24 inch pipe that goes out from here and pops up on the inside of that. We are not sand bedded, so that makes it drastically easier to manage manure. We do compost manure. Um, we have a separator right there um, that we haven't run in a, in a while, um, which is fine by me. It makes for, it's complicated. Separating manure is expensive. But as you see, just under halfway full right now. Um, so I'm gonna make it till April with, at that rate, we'll be good. And then I'll have, that holds like 580. And I figure with all the piping, we're at like 610. So 610,000 gallons to haul out, which is, yeah, it will be good because everything this spring is going to be local. So if you're new to the channel and you haven't watched any of the manure hauling videos, go check them out. 
And make sure you like and subscribe on some of this stuff. Really appreciate it. Well, that's our separator. We wanted to put it in a building. Because we live in a state park, putting things up is very challenging. Um, and there's a lot of political aspects to that. So that's why that $35,000 separator sits there. But did a lot of different things with that. Uh, put in a whole gravity to it, pump to it. Moved it around a bunch of times. Uh, there's always better ways of that, but the people that separate manure every day, uh, especially sand manure, hats off to you because it it can be a full-time job if you're on a bigger farm trying to do that. Well, so when dry cows got kicked out of the barn because we filled the barn with all milker cows, this is what we ended up doing. These are temporary housing. Um, you don't need a permit due to the size. They can get moved. They're on sand bedded. So dry cows, pre-fresh heifers uh, uh, 30 days prior are in here. Um, we can fit 24. In the summer, if they're over 30 days to calving, they're out on pasture, we bring them back in. But it's not ideal picking up manure there but it actually, it works. And our big thing is we can't build a facility um, without going through all the proper channels, which takes, yeah, sometimes you never win on that, so. The winter, not perfect, but it works. Um, I don't like how the water pools um, needed a little bit more space, but. We got to scrape it with a skid steer. They got the feed bunk here. And then we got our heifer facility that is in dire need of repair. But going back to, we don't own that. That's part of our lease with the state. So we can't just go build a facility for our heifers. Um, but we are currently in the process of building two more of these huts over there so that they have more space, more cow comfort. Um, like we, like I said, we grew our herd. We were milking 65. We went to 120 um, milkers, and we did that with our heifers too. So more space over there. Granted, we're at the point where we don't have much uh, turnover on animals due to robots being uh, relaxed. So we don't need as many heifers. Um, so we're picking and choosing who we're raising. Um, and we're just trying to get a, a superior animal. But, yeah, that's what goes on on the dairy side. Um, yeah, we got the grain bin that feeds the, feeds the dairy cows, the two other grain bins, dry cow, uh, canola or soy, depending on the market, and then the meal for the milk cows. I figured it was time to show you guys our farm due to I just showed you Richardson's farm, Richardson's dairy um, that we just started up. And I actually have a six unit barn that is a retrofit robot barn that I'm gonna give you an idea of what goes on there. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. I gotta get back to work. I got a lot of stuff to do actually. Um, and I gotta go to training this week for the new style robot. So make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't done so. And I'll see you guys on the next video, uh, hoping to get more and more spring spring work's gonna be here before i know it and i'm not even close to ready so i'll see you guys on the next one thanks for watching have a good one